Hey everyone, welcome to a PC component review. Uh, maybe this is a little bit out of my normal wheelhouse, but I thought it would be interesting to go over something that I've been thinking about for a while and I decided to act on it recently. Uh, this is my computer and I've kind of shown you it a few times, but the specs will be in the description. But the main thing we're going to be focusing on today is the case. Some of you may recognize it, but it's the NZXT H510 Elite case. Uh, that I got on sale back in 2019 for about 160 Canadian dollars. I think that's the regular price in American dollars, so makes things a little bit easier for us, but that's how much I paid for it. It's quite an expensive case, but it is quite a nice case as well. It is one of the best looking cases that I've ever seen, and that's why I decided to pick it for this PC, as when I was building this, I did not want to cut any corners, I just wanted to get the best of the best. And this, in my opinion at the time, was the best. Now those of you familiar with this case, and even if you have one, uh, you may know that it has a bit of a flaw, and the case itself is really nice, but it really does lack cooling at the front specifically. The entire front and one of the sides is all glass. There's a little strip down the side where there's some cooling section where the intake fans on the front can suck some air in, but it's not enough. And it chokes the CPU under high load, uh, which isn't good if you want high performance stuff. This case unmodified is good for a kind of medium end PC, but if you're going high end and you're doing overclocking like I am, it's just not going to be enough. Now I've run for the past th basically three years just fine, but recently I decided to get into overclocking a little bit. I overclocked my CPU just a touch and my GPU as well, and I was playing Guardians of the Galaxy uh, at pr some pretty high settings, basically max except ray tracing was off. I was a couple hours in and I decided to fire up MSI Afterburner to see how things were going in terms of the frame rate stability and also in terms of the temperatures, and I was shocked to find that my PC was running at 80 degrees on the GPU and the CPU was I think somewhere around 80 as well, which is way, way too hot. Uh, and the reason was, well, pretty darn clear. Because my GPU was so hot, it had heated up the interior of the case significantly, just blowing into the tempered glass, and that was causing my radiator to heat soak, so it wasn't getting enough fresh air in, not enough was going out, <laughs> it was just a rough situation, and it took away some frames that I could have had while playing, so I decided that after that I would look up some alternatives and I ended up choosing to modify this case instead of just buying a new one. There were a number of reasons for that, but let's just talk about the modifications first and we'll come to a conclusion about all of this at the end. So all you have to do is type in H510 Elite front case mod or something like that on Google and you'll find a couple of results. The one that I gravitated towards is called Jake Face Customs on Etsy and also he has a website. Links in the description of this, by the way, uh, just so you know both to the case and to the parts that I'm showing. So this video is not sponsored by NZXT or by Jake Face Customs. It is more of a review of both of their parts simultaneously uh, because, yeah, I spent a lot of money on this and I thought it would be interesting to tell you guys about it. So here are his selection pieces. He's got uh, front mods and side mods for various NZXT cases. It seems to be a common thing for people to want to modify their NZXT cases. That doesn't make them bad. It just means, well, people care about them enough to not just swap them out. So that's kind of cool, actually. So what these are basically is drop-in replacements for the specific panels that you want to replace, i.e. the front and the side. I decided to go with the front and the side, and the patterns I chose were the mountain pattern and the dots on the side, which I'm very happy with the results of. Decided to make it a little bit more interesting by going with that. They're made from acrylic, they are a little bit bendy as you'll see when we take them out, but it's not a big deal unless you're punching your computer case, which you probably shouldn't be anyways, unless you want a fistful of glass. <laughs> In Canadian dollars, it's $80 for the side panel and $76 uh, for the front panel. Uh, and that does not include shipping. <laughs> so if you're doing some math here, you'll realize that it costs just as much to replace these panels as it does to just buy a whole new one of these cases, <laughs> which is kind of nuts, but I went with it anyways. 
So this footage here is from Guardians of the Galaxy running on the absolute maximum settings at 1440p. By maximum settings, I mean including ray tracing on Ultra, which is not how I would suggest that you play the game. Massive side note here, um, games like this obviously tax the system, but when I'm playing at 1440p, I turned off ray tracing entirely, and that gave me a double the current frames that you see here boost, which is fairly significant. So I was able to play the game at a basically steady 120 FPS, no V-Sync, just locked at 120, and not have to worry about too many frame drops. That's the right way to play. You, you don't always have to max out settings, even if you can. Just pick a target frame rate and drop everything until you get there. But we can see that after about 10 minutes, the GPU was hitting 77 degrees Celsius, and that is with a thermal limit manually set in MSI Afterburner of 88 degrees before things start to shut down. So that's uh, not actually that bad. Um, seeing it up past the 80s after I was playing for a couple hours uh, was a little bit worrying, but this is not terrible. And again, this is with the case unmodified. On the CPU, I decided to render something using Vegas, which is not... Well, it's Vegas 14, so it doesn't recognize my 2080 Ti, so it renders with the CPU and it uses it quite heavily. Uh, and you can see there it got up to 80 degrees, uh, which is pretty hot for the CPU once again. Most components, generally speaking, uh, unless it's a laptop, um, they're going to max out somewhere around 85 degrees. You don't want to go higher than that without risking damage, uh, but that depends on your system. It depends on the components themselves. And most of the time, uh, you can exceed those thermal limits a little bit before you actually melt something. <laughs> that being said, the lower the better, generally. So with those benchmarks set, it was time to take things out of the box. This is a full unboxing for you, so this is how the packaging came. This stuff being fragile is concerning in the mail, so I was pretty worried. Expensive and fragile is not a good combination for the post, especially when it's coming from the US and shipping to Canada. I was quite concerned, but thankfully it came all in one piece. You know, I'm a little bit of a rough person with boxes uh, and opening packaging. Uh, I do not have a delicate touch, and we'll see how that becomes an issue later. Side note, don't use a screwdriver to open up packaging. I'm dumb. Uh, yeah, that, that is a reoccurring theme. So opening it up, revealing from the bubble wrap, you can see that the panels are covered in a paper on both sides, which is kind of interesting. Uh, basically, that just protects it from being scratched, and uh, it actually works very well, although, as you will soon find out, it is a big pain to take off of these small patterns. On the big panel, it wasn't a big deal. On the small panel, it was a little annoying, but yeah, it's not that big a deal. Bit of appeal for you here, but I was looking at the reviews for this and uh, before I bought it, and I noticed that a lot of people were complaining about the paper so it's kind of funny to see that it wasn't just me that had this problem but again it's not that big a problem i'd rather them not be scratched and have to deal with the paper than have them come scratched and then have to deal with the return <laughs> it's a little bit of extra effort but it's worth it so with the panels off you can see that uh, there's a bit of a smoked uh, gray color to this side panel which is cool it basically matches the same smoke as the stock version and then the front one is a frosted look and that is exactly what I ordered you can get different textures and stuff but I decided to go frosted so it would slightly obscure the fans I didn't want to go tinted because I thought it looked a little dark and uh, yeah the mountain frosted look is really lovely uh, so I'm glad that I went with that so it's fairly easy to put these on. Basically, you just have to take the old ones off. <laughs> uh, I guess that makes it uh, makes it a little bit obvious there. But in order to take the front panel off, you do have to take off two small screws. Fairly easy once again. It's just two small screws, one on each side, and then the panel pops off with a bit of force. Because it's glass, every time that I do this, I get worried. Like when I was building this PC, I was like shaking trying to take the glass off. But you do have to give it a bit of force and... Uh, can't be afraid to do it. Just don't drop it or do anything dumb and you're probably gonna be fine. So installation was super easy. Basically all you gotta do is just place it in there properly with the right side facing in and uh, it just magnetically sticks to the uh, panel there which is really nice so very very comforting to know that it fits snug like that. 
And there's our first look at it in the uh, frosted. <laughs> the frosted blue looks really cool, but the frosted multicolor looks even cooler. Uh, I'm just very happy with the way that it looks. So something to note here is that these front panels don't come with any sort of filter. So right now, as it sits, I'm actually sitting right next to my PC as usual, but it's just sucking in dust. <laughs> so eventually what I got to do is put some kind of filter behind this because as of right now, I'm going to have to clean out my PC a lot more often than I did before. Time for the side panel. This one actually goes on a little bit more rough. Uh, it's not a perfect fit. It fits a little snug and it has to bend a little bit to fit on there. I was a little disappointed with that, but it's not the end of the world. Like it could just be manufacturing fitment of the case too. So I'm sure that it's difficult to make them all perfect for every single one. But in the end, it fit nicely. It wasn't uh, falling out or anything dumb like that. So uh, it looks fine the way it is. And there's the full package there with flashing lights. The flashing lights really do make the frosted look uh, really nice because I feel like the frosted look keeps the lights around for just a little longer. But before we go too far, let's take a look at the benchmarks. How much of a difference does this make? So once again, about 10 minutes of Guardians of the Galaxy and the GPU was sitting at 76. <laughs> so I was really disappointed to see this, that the side panel doesn't actually make as much of a difference as I was hoping, at least in a short term burst like this. And th that's kind of the thing, like we have a lot of factors to consider, including the room temperature, the fact that the PC was running the entire time that I did this switch, and also uh, the fact that, well, <laughs> it's just a couple holes in the side. It doesn't have any uh, fan on it or anything like that. Although I specifically picked the holes because that means that I could theoretically screw a fan into it if I wanted to. Although I think it would look hideous. Uh, it might be a mod for the future if I really get serious about graphics card overclocking. The CPU, however, dropped by 6 degrees with the render. Again, that was a 10 minute render just to see what it would look like. 6 degrees is actually a decent amount. It's not quite 10%, but it's like a decent drop in temperature for what I was doing there. So I was happy to see that. So I decided that 10 minutes was not going to cut it. I'd have to play the game for a little bit longer and try to replicate the stuff that happened before where the graphics card was well over 80. I think it was top 83 or something when I had the case closed. Uh, when I went back and played Guardians with lower settings because again I like to play at high FPS so RTX off still up very high 90% GPU usage for maybe two hours two and a half hours. Uh, it managed to get up to 79 degrees, but never crested 80, so it does make a difference, but it's not that significant, at least in the side panel. Uh, there definitely are some ways that I could make this better, though. I'll drop something in the comments to let you know what it took to render this video to see if there's any temperature differential there, but I think that the real strength of this mod is the CPU cooling. In order to make this test legit, I didn't change my fan profiles, I didn't change any speeds or anything, it was just as is. The same overclock both times, nothing different than the case panels, and the CPU was at least 6 degrees cooler. So that is a decent difference, and it's a noticeable difference as well. So it's kind of cool to know that I was right in thinking that the front panel was indeed choking the fans. And I think that's the case, especially if you're running higher fans, you're running a, a faster speed as well. It's not going to be able to get enough air to feed those things. And so let's conclude by talking about the pricing and whether it was worth it or not. Uh, and I'll give you my ultimate conclusion about this mod. So the first thing we should probably talk about is that I had to pay $60 to get these things shipped to my house. So that's basically a whole other panel. It's like 60, 60 and 60 from the website. And that's in US dollars plus tax. It came out to be just under 200 US dollars uh, for these two panels to be delivered to my front door. For that kind of money, I probably could have bought three <laughs> NZXT flow cases. Uh, which is the same case, it just has a flow front panel on it. Do I feel like it was worth it? Uh, the answer is kinda. I think if for my purposes that the flow vented side panel is just a little bit too extra. I could have saved $60 and $30 of the shipping by not uh, ordering that. If I were you and I was in this situation, 
uh, and you didn't want to just completely swap your case, then just buy the front panel, pick one that you really like, and then go with that. The quality is good. Uh, Jake Face Customs knows what he's doing. It's good stuff. It's just expensive, and it, it kind of sucks that that's the case, but I understand it's handmade crafts, right? You got to pay for the quality. Not everything is wish pricing. I mean, <laughs> that's probably for the better. If I was to go back and do it all again, uh, way back in the day of my PC building, uh, back in 2019 when I first assembled this thing, I probably would have chosen a different case. And uh, <laughs> there are a couple of reasons for that, um, but it's not like I hate this one. I like it, and I really like the way that it looks. I still really like the tempered glass look, and uh, it's quiet, it's, a, it's just a nice case to build into. But man, I wish they had the flow case back then, because I probably would have bought that instead. <laughs> that would be my suggestion. Don't buy the Elite, buy the Flow. That's that's the one to get. So yeah, that's my review of the NZXT uh, H510 Elite, a bit of a mouthful, and also Jake Face Customs front uh, and side modification for that case. So hopefully you enjoyed it. If you have any specific questions about it, let me know. Uh, this has been quite expensive, but an interesting look into what modding cases looks like. Very simple mods, actually. It's got me thinking more about fan quality and stuff. I'm thinking I might even replace the, the accessory um, fans that I have in here to try and get better airflow. And I was thinking about maybe putting a little fan in front of my graphics card to suck out some of that hot air. I've got a lot of ideas in mind, but <laughs> not so much time. If you've got any pointers for me, be sure to let me know in the comments. Oh yeah, be sure to subscribe and also like and also comment on this video. I'd appreciate that a lot. <laughs> See ya.